It's actually a very interesting question. It's not something that I talked about, you know, in any of this round of promotion, but you're completely right. This was not easy. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time in the channel, hit subscribe right now. Olaf, thank you so much for your time. It's busy. It's it, it's always busy for you. Uh, you've not been 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 calm in a while. Last time we spoke, it was at your Toronto show uh, a couple of months ago now. Um, mm -hmm. How was the rest of that tour? But more importantly, how are you right now? How are you doing? First of all, really nice to talk to you again. And uh, last interview, we had uh, we had a good view from the uh, really beautiful venue in Toronto. It yeah. was a great show, also. And uh, good to talk, good to uh, to hang out. So nice to see you again, man. And um, yeah, uh, show was uh, fantastic. We've been uh, great since then. The tour went, you know, amazing in in every way. Now uh, since then, uh, you know, there was uh, Christmas, and since then we've been busy uh, pro uh, busy promoting the album, exactly, uh, which is coming out now in uh, twenty three days, give or take uh, an hour or two. So that's uh, enormously exciting, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're 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 not at all counting down, <laughs> you know exactly the Who's days, the hours. Yeah, exactly. Just looking Who's at count? the date thing on my computer. <laughs> I thought that I knew what Amaranth was all about, and then we've got the Insatiable video coming out, and it's like. You guys, before, I thought you were at like the top level in a video game, but then all of a sudden everything opens up and there's this bonus level where everything is turned up even more. Like to quote Spinal Tap, like that video alone or that song, I should say, um, is Amar or this whole album is Amaranth at 11. Uh, is, is that a fair way of looking at it? Just like everything that we know about your sound is just more of, of it? I think that's an accurate description. It's kind of funny because I think already with um, album number three, that's like, because um, I love the Spinal Tap quote, and that was uh, already an epithet that, that I was using at the time. Like, now we cranked everything up to 11. I yeah. probably said that for another couple of albums as well, so we have to find new figures for it, you know, from, <laughs> from our point of view. But I think, uh, yeah, I mean, that's definitely our philosophy in a lot of ways because, um, I mean, Amaranth is about a lot of things. It's about yeah. contrast. It's about uh, dealing with uh, sometimes difficult topics, but in an uplifting way. It's about um, keeping an open mind for different uh, inspiration, you know, for different kind of genres. It's not always, I will uh, say not always so much about subtlety, let, let, let's say. So we go all in, you know, short and sweet. <laughs> like uh, It's supposed to be, uh, supposed to be entertaining. And of course we have other, you know, subtle moments as well. But I would say in general, it's it's really about um, jokes aside, about really trying to figure out, you know, where we want to head creatively, and, you know, and as a band, you know, both from the live perspective and uh, on the albums, like what kind of videos do we want to do? What kind of songs do we want to uh, create? And, you know, what influences can we incorporate? And I think, um, and most of all, how can we build upon these different contrasts, you know, between the dark and the light and the heavy and uh, the bright that even rhymed. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's a, it's a constant quest and a constant um, work in progress, I would say. And um, at the end of the day, we're just trying to find where our own creativity wants to take us. It's such a balanced album in the sense that every song really stands on its own. There's 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 no filler on this album. Like it, if it feels like it must have been very hard to pick what are going to be the you know which songs are going to be the singles because I feel like you know we've seen a couple of videos obviously already, but there's other songs, Resistance, Breaking the Waves, the title track that all you know for me would be like yeah, that that single material right there. Um, is there truth to that? Like, are there long discussions with between management, label, individual band members with this album, particularly on what should be the singles? Because they all show a different side of the album. I mean, it's 
it's not always easy these things and um it's actually a very interesting question it's not something that i talked about you know in any of this round of promotion but you're completely right this was not easy this time it was i would say more difficult than before and uh you know i would like to this is obviously completely subjective but i would like to agree with the fact that we spent a lot of love on each and every song and every song has you know its identity that's really what we try to to accomplish because not that we didn't do that before but let's say that we probably put some extra effort into it like you're always trying to surpass yourself in in different ways and um you know since the songs stand on their own quite a bit it's easy to put that extra work and time into it because you can kind of hear what the song wants also but um in terms of uh, like who makes the decisions and stuff like that typically we're a band that kind of internally make all the major decisions okay. all the creative decisions and then then we basically have our you know our council of people like management and record label like you said and agents and so forth that uh, you know give input for, for everything and sometimes they might even strongly suggest that you know <laughs> think where you're going with um not with the music itself of course but like yeah, let's yeah. say a single choices and stuff like that and um i think it was pretty funny uh, this time because a lot of people had different opinions okay and it tends to go a little bit more in a straight direction and um but the, the thing is that the, the band is always uh, trying to keep an open mind when it comes to this like we've been a little bit wrong in the past uh, on the nexus album you know all the way 11 years ago then we uh, we had a completely different idea for our first single than the okay. nexus and in my hypothetical track list as i was just putting it together that was song number nine like it's a good song it's nothing special and it turned into be something great same thing with drop dead cynical uh, you know People yeah, yeah, think yeah. that's the obvious single from, uh, and the song that's been doing the best from any of our albums right. was not the you know main contender for first single. So, all the way back to what you were talking about, yes, there has been quite a few people that have told me, you know, now that they've heard the whole album, they've been kind of asking me like, why did you not release the title track as the first single? Like that would have been an obvious choice because it's also the title track. And I think it really depends on you know how do you want to present the band. What aspects do you want to uh, kind of show off? Like, how does it represent the album? What kind of variety do you want to have? So right. it's all about trying to, uh, to to represent the album as good as possible, rather than you know trying to find the hit single because I think that's a little bit. I mean, it's a little bit how Spotify works, but if you get the album rolling, it will push all the songs instead of just one song. Of so course, of that's course. kind of how we think. That's kind of how we think a little bit. So I would say. Um, I think that the title track, The Catalyst, is probably probably my favorite song on the whole album. Okay, so, so uh, maybe we do a little, maybe we will do a little bit of a spotlight for that song in a way, also. Right, right. Well, so it's I find it interesting because, I mean, there's a ton of stuff that I want to talk to you about, but now that you mentioned that song in particular, because I obviously had a chance to listen to the full album. Um, when I heard the the title track, I was like, this song. It would be really cool to start the show with, but it would also, in a weird way, be cool not to play the song, but have the song play as like an intro to the song, because it builds so well the vibe or the atmosphere of what Amrath is all about. You know, like how Iron Maiden plays Running With The Devil before their shows or, uh, you know, Doctor Doctor, uh, and people know like, okay, it's time to get into the Maiden Life vibe. I, when, when I heard that song, I was like, okay, yeah, it would be really cool to see you guys open. But, but it also kind of just like builds really well. So I thought I, I, it's a very interesting song. It, it, it's, a, it's a song definitely that I've thought about the most ever since listening to the album, uh, regardless of the title, right? Um, do, do you have, like, th does that make sense to you when I say these things? Yeah, sure. And the thing is that, um, I mean, obviously, we are now going to start to tour from this album just a few days before the album is released. So then you have a little bit of an interesting situation there, like, mm -hmm. at the, um, uh, like with, with the title track, because it's kind of built a little bit as a live intro. Yeah. But can you really open a show with a song that no one's ever heard? Like, are they going to hear it for the first time? And even after the album is released, it might be a little weird to open the entire show uh, with a song that people might have heard maybe a couple of times, maybe three times. So um, this, uh, it's been a little bit of, you know, putting some pieces of the puzzle together. Yeah, we, yeah. Uh, I was actually, just before I was uh, talking to you, I was working on this very thing uh, with, the, with the live show. So we, we have a really fantastic idea of how to structure this, you know, and um, 
So uh, without giving away too much, we don't want to, so like some bands can do, because we're very enthusiastic about this album, but we don't want to murder people with new songs that they haven't heard before. So it's this kind of balance that you need to strike because you also want to, in a good setting, introduce the songs. Mm -hmm. So this it has, it has given us um, a little bit to think about, but uh, I think we have found a good structure for it. Let's talk about something completely different for a second. Um, uh, you mentioned early in this conversation, and we talked about this last time, that Amaranth, people that know you guys only on a superficial level um, will, will, will know you as a, a beat, poppy electronic metal band that brings color, that brings a party. Um, but people that are closer to the band know that if they dig, there's a lot of you know serious themes there, and that's the same. That was already more on the forefront with the previous album. That's definitely the same still here. Um, and, you know, even if we see us, you know, a video for Damnation Flame, where you guys are all turned into vampires and what have you, if we really, you know, listen, the vampires are more metaphors and the blood sucking is done by, you know, other people and other organizations, if you will. Um, it, you already kind of, teased that when I spoke to you last time, but you're all in on that because um, it worked for the last album. No, no need to hide that side of yourself. I think it's um, rather the the way that you mentioned it uh, earlier, that it's uh, all about taking this to, to 11, because when I would say Manifest had maybe the most most of the you know most serious subject matter so far in an amaranth album and it kind of also happened and it was a little bit up to the times you know in the pandemic era and uh it it was something that that we kind of really liked because the thing is what, what we realized that it it really goes together with the theme of the uh, contrast and you know the dark and the light as i said before so you actually you have um like insatiable for example one of the singles you have a really up-tempo uh, kind of uh, triplet beat party song that's what it sounds like mm -hmm. and people are going to probably hear it like that and the word insatiable is like it's kind of a little bit of a poppy word in a way but it's what it's really about is like human overconsumption and the consequences that it has you know right on a global scale and on the personal uh, level as well what it leads to basically so it's um it's that kind of contrast like you it it might strike you in a certain way the first time you hear it and um, obviously, as you mentioned, with Damnation Flame, we're dealing with some metaphors there, and it's a little bit more covered up. Yeah, and yeah. we were also having maybe a little bit more fun with that song, but a song like Insatiable, if you just read the lyrics, it should be evidently clear what it's about. Yeah. It's just that the, the lyrics might not be framed in the kind of melodies that you would normally associate that kind of lyrics to. And I think that has a really great effect. And um, to tie it all up, I think it's also about a um, you know, general maturing process in a way also that as you grow older and you get more experience, you see more of the world and yeah, the yeah. world shows more of itself to you, reveals more of itself to you as well, then it, it, it gets more and more difficult not to include these topics. And uh, to underline, they're not necessarily political. They're just kind of um, as close to objective uh, observations as we can come rather than to be, uh, you know, dividing it from a pure party politi political yeah, yeah. point You're of view. You're not preaching in any way. Uh, so uh, I am going to use that, that the video for that song as another bit of a forced segue here, because you say like, oh, you know, we're maturing as well. You know, we're, we're you're different now than when you were starting. But the insatiable video and the start of that video, but then also the end of revision, uh, mm -hmm. we're very peculiarly similar with the whole band in a very dramatic way, walking slow-mo towards the camera, which brought me back to something that you talked about as well in our previous interview, your very first video that you try to make as big as possible with a small budget for hunger, which also starts with the mm -hmm. whole band walking away from an exploding plane or something like that.
So some callbacks to the old days, maybe even just subconsciously. Um, when you think about those early days, when it was so very DIY and you didn't have the whole team to do that, are there parts of that that you miss today? Interesting. I mean, yes and no. I think it's um, it, it goes a little bit in the same direction as, you know, compare an arena show to a club show and, you know, mm -hmm. it's it's cool in it um, in its own different you know ways, so to speak. But I mean, I guess in a lot of ways we have we have kept a lot of our working methods, and at least how we um, how we kind of envelop them and how we how we deal things with things on the practical level. Just as an example, like um, we're at the point now that we we could obviously when we are writing music, me and Elise. We could go to a fancy studio, rent it for a long time, do a um, writer's cabin, you know, somewhere, you know, really pretty and uh, spend a lot of time there. And it's all fancy schmancy. And, you know, it, it would kind of make some sense budget wise without going into details. But I mean, what we still do is kind of DIY as well. Like I will show you. So that's the little studio. Yeah my little home studio that's and this is where all the music for the catalyst was written for example yeah, yeah, so no yeah. fancy smashy studio it's just a home studio like uh, tens of thousands of, of other people just have at home there's no reason to, to do for us to do it any different basically because we're not doing the productions here we're mainly uh, doing the, the songwriting and it's good to do it in an environment where you're comfortable yeah, 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 and the yeah. same thing goes with the videos that uh, we've been working with a lot of different directors for example, Damnation Flame was made by uh, Grupa 13, a Polish production company. And yep. uh, in between there, we worked with a bunch of people. But uh, some of these callbacks, they're entirely intentional because the video director who made Hunger is the same that made Revision. Oh, really? And now we've done, uh, yeah, now we've done uh, three videos in a row with, uh, it's Patrick Uneas. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's, he's been in the business for, for a long time. So, so a lot of the things, while they have, you know, grown bigger, it's a little bit like touring as well. Like a lot of things, they change, but um, you're still in the tour bus. You're still performing on stages. Even if st stages are bigger and the production is bigger, the uh, the core fundamental things, just like when we are writing music, stays the same. You guys are also covering Roxette, um, uh, which for you know which is not a secret so go on okay please. <laughs> good 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 so for a 40 year old well you know soon to be 40 year old european that takes me back to my childhood um you know and it's fading like a flower i believe right um yeah that you guys exactly. did and it came out so well um but like if you're talking about it's already hard to choose what single we want to have out of our original songs or which songs should we put in a in a live uh, show aligning with so many people on what classic song you want to reimagine is that was that one where everybody was like yeah we're gonna do that one perfect choice or is that something that caused a ton of conversations and debates well it was um to be perfectly honest it was uh it was spontaneous to uh, to begin with what actually happened was that it was um, right when we um, when we started to record videos for the Manifest album, we were, uh, you know, spending a lot of time in vans when we couldn't fly, you know, because of less uh, flight departures and, you know, these things and isolating and, you know, all the stuff that uh, was going on back then. We had a lot of time to discuss things. So uh, one of the things that came up was that it's kind of too early to start to write a new album. We can't go on tour, so should we do something else? And mm -hmm. what one of the things that did pop up was uh, maybe we should, uh, you know, do uh, like a cover EP or even a cover album. Like, let's select some uh, songs. Let's go into the studio and record them. And I was kind of thinking to myself that that's still going to take a lot of time. But <laughs> we, uh, I, I, th I thought it was, a, you know, from the arrangement point of view. But uh, I still thought it was a really great idea. So we started to like kind of throw around songs and collect songs. And this was, um, since most of us, all except one, are uh, Swedish, then yeah. this was a song that came up multiple times from, you know, several different directions that you might not have expected. And um, to speak from my own point of view, like this was one of my favorite songs when I was, uh, was one of my first favorite songs when I was right. about five, six years old. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. back in the day when it was uh, released, my sister was listening to it and probably my mom or something like that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, 
so uh so essentially it's about it's really about what you said with the nostalgia putting on the uh, you know the rose tinted glasses and you know how things were better before and in combination with um uh, acknowledging you know what the roots are for us as you know swedish people and music because we listen i mean regardless if we liked it or not and you will have a lot of people from sweden that would never admit this but swedish musicians metal musicians are particularly good with melodies and this is connected to uh, obviously connected to abba and uh, rock set and exit yeah. days and even swedish folk music like this is something that is in our dna basically so um so it was when i re-listened to the song because i obviously heard it a million times but when i listened to it and imagined it as an amaranth song i realized that with these chord progressions and these melodies and you know the way that the dynamics work between kind of a darker verse and a more up-tempo chorus i'm like this is this makes too much sense not right. to do it yeah so uh when we realized that we had we had like a spare half day or something like that to record some extra drums in the studio so we're like okay hop in and do it just yeah. put on the track play along to the track you know a little bit in the background and morton just made his arrangement at the same time i made a little keyboard arrangement and we worked from there and it was done pretty fast oh because wow, yeah. it 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 operates very much like an Amaranth song, basically. Yeah, 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 yeah. Doing covers is not something you've never done before. And in a way, you can consider an acoustic version of your own song also some sort of a cover. Um, I don't know if this has ever been in the works or talks, but I mean, I obviously remember, was it five years ago or six years ago, you guys did this um acoustic set just the three of you i think for metal hammer somewhere in berlin i think it was i could be wrong yep uh, it's available on youtube and it's like it's pretty organic you know like you guys are joking in the you know throughout that oh i can't really hear that well or whatever it, it was very raw let's let's call it but it was also yep. really fun and it shows that a song that has a million layers like an amaranth song is only gonna work well if stripped down it works well um is that something that that is that that is on 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 the band's wish list to do a proper like acoustic release whether it's all new material or reimagined versions i mean with the reimagined versions like to be honest we, we kind of did this a little bit spread over actually some with albums. the bonus tracks yeah 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 i mean spread over some albums but also um kind of a little bit particularly for the for this album i'm not sure if you heard uh, from the manifest um uh, bonus tracks there's like a, there's a song um, Adrenaline, where we did uh, like a flamenco version of it. Oh, I'm not sure if you you heard it. No, I, I don't think heard. a lot of people did. And and the thing is that so so here's really really why this is really interesting to us to make these kind of you know different versions, uh, which we also did for the Catalyst. So this um, song Adrenaline, it was kind of uh, you know the way that I wrote the chord progression and kind of the vibe of the song it has this kind of latin spanish flamenco okay. vibe to it and if you listen to the song on the album you would never be able to tell but that's where the influences and the chord progressions come from and but when you integrate it into the to the amaranth sound it just sounds like you know it's a cool amaranth song basically mm -hmm. so you have this um we did a couple of versions from the catalyst as bonus tracks because this kind of um uh, spiked our appetite uh, appetite yeah, yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. For, for these kinds of things so you have uh, Breaking the Waves, as you mentioned uh, yeah. before. So the way that that song was arranged was very influenced by uh, Scottish and Irish folk music. Oh, really? And it's, yeah, and it doesn't have any of, uh, you know, those particular sounds, but just the way that you would play a bagpipe and the way that you would work from those chords and, uh, you know, that tonality, that's what the song was essentially based upon. And Elise is really singing the song like that. Even if it's a metal song and you know if you would play it to a scottish person the person would say no you wouldn't <laughs> recognize uh, any any of that in, in that music but then i think it's really interesting to um to do these versions to really underline where the influences are coming from so what we did was to um, hire a bagpipe player and we got my uh, wife to play the irish tin whistle and you know some some other uh, irish flutes and uh acoustic guitar of course and you know singing in that way and you know kind of medieval uh, style drums just to uh, underline that you know this is where the inspiration comes from and this yeah. is like this is how i heard it in my head before i started to uh, arrange it as an amaranth song so this scottish version of breaking the waves will be a bonus track for i think 
like um like uh exclusive uh, you know physical cd thing it yeah, will yeah, probably yeah. appear on the internet you know kind of uh, much later but uh, yeah, 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 it yeah. is a really 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 amazing version so um and there's also a version of insatiable okay uh, which which isn't which isn't necessarily you know where the inspiration came from it was more like of a jam okay. and that turned into like a latin latino jazz kind of very jazzy jam with jazz piano and stuff like that awesome so uh, you know with the um, with the double bass and you know yeah, 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 yeah. so so what i was thinking that you know to go all the way back to your original question like it would be super cool to you know invite some guest musicians do like a basic setup let's see if joan can play the you know the double bass put together something that is um that is a little bit less raw you know than just an acoustic guitar and you know two voices but still not overworked and still you know very jammy so i won't say that this is like super high on the list already, yeah. but it's definitely you know something that we would love to do and it's something that the band in general is really kind of good at like we have two super dynamic vocalists and you know i play all sorts of instruments and stuff like that so it would be really cool to just show that different side of the band. Olaf, thank you so much for just, you know, allowing me to ask you all these random questions um, and that, that were all over the place a little bit, but I'm super excited for everybody to discover this album, but then also with all the shows that are coming, uh, you know, you guys are obviously going on the road. Um, again, with Dragon Force and Infected Ray now, not the jokesters of Nano War, but that'll be an amazing package. And we're going to see you on so many festivals. So it's going to be a busy year for you again. Uh, but that means that all of us can see you on a stage. And that's always exciting. Thank you so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to our next chat. Yeah, the pleasure is all mine, man. Thank you so much for the uh, super well uh, researched and uh, super interesting questions, as always, my friend. So let's talk again soon. Let's do a follow up, uh, you know, down down the line. And, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, an absolute pleasure. I wish you a great evening, my friend. You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.